Praise the Lord. series on the river of God. We're going to be in the river probably next two months. And I'm hoping we will continue to be in the river. Come on. We're going to like it in the river. I think there can be five messages. It could be more. I don't know. You know, in the past, we have gotten calls from people interested in our church, they would call the office, talk to my daughter Mia and say, what do you guys believe? And uh, say, we're interested in coming to your church, just want to know what, what, what do y'all believe? Now remember one day I was down in the foyer of the church, that lady drove up she got out of the car. Uh, my wife remembers. I was a name, Della, Della, uh, whatever. But anyway, she, she, she's an elderly lady. She walked in and she says, The pastor, I said, I'm the pastor. I said, Pastor Carl. And she introduced herself. She says, I, I've been interested in coming to this church, but I want to know what you guys believe. She said, do, do y'all allow the gifts of the Holy Spirit to operate in your church services? I said, we do. And she says, do you preach from the Word? I said, yes, I do. I said, I'm not smart enough to come up with anything else other than that. <laughs> So, so what that tells me is that she must have experienced churches that don't. And, but I want to let you know that, that this church, this whole ministry, all three campuses, we love the Word of God. We love preaching the Word of God. We love hearing the Word of God. And we also love the freedom of God's Holy Spirit. And let God have his way in, in, in the service. And I was here, Pastor Joseph saw my, my, my sport coat, and he said, are you going to fling that sport coat around like, what's his name? Betty Head? <laughs> I said, if God tells me to do it, I'll do it. <laughs> whatever, whatever. But we're going to let God have his way. That's what we do. So your pastor oversees this ministry. And I've come to know God's presence. I've come to know the power of God and the power of His Word. In this ministry, over the years, I've been here 26 years, and uh, we, have, we have experienced great moves of God's Holy Spirit in the past. But we're believing it for it to be again that God will visit us once again in, in a powerful way. In, in a very powerful way. So in this series, we're going to understand the Spirit of God as revealed in the Word of God. And, uh, but God's Word reveals the Spirit of God as the river of life. And as we go through this series, you're going to see where we're going to end up. Actually, we're going to be going upstream. We're going to go to the source where, where it is. And we, that's where we're going to be heading. God's Word reveals that the spirit of life that flows from God to us, through us, to the world. That's how, that's how it is. That's how it works. 
See, the church is a conduit of the river of life. That's all God has here on earth for his spirit to move in. We're it. We're the conduit in which the river of life will flow through us to other people. We're the pipeline mm -hmm. that delivers whatever God has for mankind is going to come through us. There's no other way. The media is not going to do it. The politicians are not going to do it. Make-believe churches are not going to do it. But it's going to be his church that the river of life is flowing through is going to bring it to a world that's lost and died. We're going to begin this series in the Old Testament. Psalm chapter 46, the psalmist says this in verse 1, and we just sang about this. God is our refuge and strength, and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. So I titled this message, There is a River. They got people sitting in churches today that don't know there's a river. There's a river and, and whose streams make glad the city of our God. Even though storms come, even though troubles come and they will come, Jesus told the disciples, man, it's going to come to you. <laughs> Tribulation is going to come. Uh, you can just forget about it. You're not going to be on easy street, but tribulation is going to come. Trials are going to come. Mountains are going to tumble. Seas are going to roar. But there's a river that is life-giving streams are going to be flowing from that river. I like that. There's tributaries. Yeah. There's, 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 the river is going to break out into streams. See, we see one river. There's only one river. Then we see streams coming out from it, which the Word of God says makes glad the city of our God which is the church. The church is where God is dwelling. We're his body. This is where he lives. He don't live out there. He don't live in buildings made by man. He lives in his own buildings. That's us. We are the temple. Now that, that scripture I just read is from the Old Testament. But I want to tell you something. The river of God is not Old Testament. It's not New Testament. The river of God is eternal. It was before the Old Testament. It's going to be after the New Testament. The river of God is the river of God. It's eternal. Yeah. It's, the, it's the life of God. It's the spirit of God. But I want to read from the New Testament in John chapter 7, verse 37. It says, On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the spirit from whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up until that time, the spirit had not been given since Jesus has not yet been glorified. The, the Gospel of John that we just read, John wrote decades, probably 30 years after Jesus died, was buried, rose from the dead, and ascended into heaven and gave the church the promise of the Holy Spirit. But at the time when Jesus said this, even John himself didn't know what he was talking about. John didn't know what Jesus was talking about to after the day of Pentecost when the river was poured out on the church and the church was filled with God's Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. 
So John writing the gospel is giving the present tense of when Jesus was at this the, the greatest feast, the Feast of the Tabernacles, and he, Jesus stood up and said, Well, believe in me as the scriptures has said streams of living water will flow from within him. Even at that time, John didn't know until the day of Pentecost when John received the Holy Spirit. They began to speak in tongues. And the, the church was empowered with God's Holy Spirit. So when John's writing his gospel, that's why he said in verse 39, by this he met the Spirit whom those who would believe in him were later to receive. And that it was later, it was, it was, it was time after that, on a day of Pentecost, he said, because the Spirit had not yet been given. But I want to tell you something, the Spirit has been given. The Spirit has been given to those who believe. And uh, but let, let's set the scene here where Jesus was in, in this verse of scripture in John. Uh, the scene was the last and greatest day of the feast. It was the last day. It was the greatest. It was the greatest day. This was the Jewish feast of the Tabernacles. Tabernacles was a was a feast that they would come to Jerusalem and they would they would all set up tents. See, because it was in remembrance of when they were in the wilderness for forty years living in tents. And they had to depend on God for everything. They had to depend on God for food. They had to depend on God for water. They had to depend on God. So they're remembering that God met all of their needs during the, during the, the wilderness journey. So this feast lasted for seven days. And every day they repeated a ritual which was a processional with the priest. The priest would leave Jerusalem. They would leave the temple. And the priest would have a gold pitcher in his hand. And he would walk. They would all follow him. He would go down to the pool of Siloam. Scoop up some of the water. And they would walk back. And the priest would go up, walk up the steps of the altar of sacrifice. And he would pour the water out. This great water ceremony reminded them, I, I guess, the link between the water and the Holy Ghost. The water and the Holy Spirit. See, on the way to the pool, they sang. It was like a procession. They sang Psalms 113 and 118. On the way there, they were singing song after song after song. But on the way back, they sang Isaiah 12, 3. They sang, with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. They sang this over and over and over again till they got back. And when they reached the altar and the water was poured out, they repeated this, Psalm 118.25, O oh Lord, save us. O oh Lord, grant us success. And this happened for seven days. They did this every day. And what they were doing was believing God for rain. Because, you see, it was the time for the crops. They planted the crops. How many know if you don't get water on crops, nothing happens? Mm -hmm. Me and Sister Dawn, we planted a garden. And, and we just watched whether they're getting enough water or not. Well, it's going to rain tomorrow. It's going to water. It's going to rain. Well, without, without the water, ain't nothing going to happen. And what they were doing, they were believing God for success that, that God would let rain fall on their crops so they could be successful. These people needed food to survive. The ritual reminded them of the water from the rock that Moses struck in the wilderness. Remember, they was all crying. There wasn't no water. Everybody was thirsty. There wasn't no water for the animals. They was crying out to Moses. 
God told Moses, go take your staff, hit the rock, strike the rock, and water's going to come out. Can you imagine the faith Moses must have had? You mean I'm going to hit this rock with my staff and water's going to come out of it? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. It's amazing because it was only in the New Testament that Paul reveals that that rock was Jesus. That rock was Christ. The water came out from the Lord himself. So the ritual reminded them, well, well, if God can make water come out of a rock, he can, he can make it rain when we need it. But on the last day, and this is what the, the text is talking about, they did this every day, but on the last day, they did it seven times. And it was becoming more intense as they were doing it. Every day, it looked like it was the, the, it was, the tension was getting stronger and stronger and stronger because they needed God to answer. They needed God to answer. So on the seventh day, the priest would do it seven times. They'd go down there seven times and come back. They did the same thing over and over and over again. Well, on the last time, when the priest would climb up the steps of the altar burnt offering to pour the water for the last time, the intensity was the highest. They were shouting. They were praising. They were singing. They were singing Isaiah 12, 3, with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. They were just out there. This is what they need. They needed God to move. And it was this precise time that Jesus was there. And Jesus stood up among them and shouted out loud. If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scriptures has said, streams of living water will flow from within them. Because you see, this whole week these people had their minds on water. Rain. We need rain. We need water for our crops. But Jesus said, you need more than that. You need water. But you need the river of life. Mm -hmm. And you're only going to get it by coming and believing on who I've been saying I am this whole time. When you do that, then streams of living water are going to flow from within you. Now, John said Jesus was talking about what was going to happen on the day of Pentecost. Those who would believe him after he was crucified, resurrected, and ascended. We see in Acts chapter 2, 120, in the upper room, believing God for what he said that day. That he promised them that if they would believe on him out of their innermost being will flow rivers of living water. John had decades. you got to remember, John was 30 years after Pentecost. John experienced what the Holy Spirit would do in a believer. And that this river would accomplish in believers when they, when they are touched by it, what would actually happen? I want to tell you, we've been witnessing God. I've been telling you this. God has been moving in our family. And, and what you thought was lost is not lost. What you're thinking is impossible is not impossible. Yes, thank you, Lord. I want to tell you, God's intention for His people is that the Holy Spirit would be streams of water flowing out of us. See, God's church won't be built by our attractions. I don't care. I mean, we try sometimes to, to do something to attract people. To our ministry. Churches do it all the time. They raise flags. And we, they do all kinds of stuff. But God's our village church when the streams of living water are flowing from this place and through us. Mm -hmm. See, the church is not a reservoir. We don't come here to 
slap around in the water. It's not a pond here. This is not a reservoir. It's not a lake. It's a conduit. We are the conduit. When the water begins to flow, the river begins to flow. It's flowing through the body of Christ, which we are. And that, that river has got to flow to everybody that's in our world. It's flowing with living water in the body of Christ. But Christians somehow, they get, they get clogged up. See, we're a pipeline. See, for, for the water to flow, the, the pipe has to be open all the time. In other words, our spigot's got to be wide open. In other words, the, the water's got to be flowing through us. You know what happens when, when, when water settles in some place? It gets stagnant. It gets stinky. That's what a lot of churches stinks. Because there's no life. Yeah. See, the, the, the river is not flowing. There's no freshness there. There's no, there's no fresh water. You know, listen, we want to be filled. I want to be filled with God's Spirit all the time. Yes, Lord, yeah. But the way, when, when we say we're filled with the Holy Spirit, meaning it, we, it's not we're just full up. No, it means that we're it's flowing through us. That's when you get the fullness of God's Holy Spirit. When it's flowing to it, that, well, I'm full. I'm, I'm spirit filled. Where, where, where is it? Right. It needs to be flowing out of you. It needs to be flowing out of you. So, really, to stay full of the Holy Spirit, how do we do that? Well, we've got to let it flow out. You start witnessing. You start praising God. You start worshiping God with all of your life, all of your heart, all of your mind. You start worshiping God. See, then the Spirit of God. That's what Jesus said. That true worshipers are going to be. is going to be those who worship Him in spirit and in truth. Well, how are you going to do it in spirit? Well, you got the Spirit's got to move through you. Amen. You got to praise Him in the Spirit. You got to praise Him in tongues. And just let the Holy Spirit. We've got to be people that's letting the Holy Spirit move through us. You don't come in and just get touched by the Holy Ghost. I want, I want to feel the Holy Ghost every day of my life. I want, to, I want, to, I want to, God to give me an opportunity to just let it flow out of somebody. Yes, come on. Let it move. Let me witness to somebody. Mm. Let me sing praises to His name. Let this living water begin to flow from us that others just might be touched. That's the only way they're going to get touched. Yep. See, living water creates a condition that brings, that brings forth life and vitality. And it proves itself. See, it proves itself in you that you have the Spirit. Because you will do things the natural man can't do. Mm -hmm. It's going to do that. See, because the river itself is fertile. Wherever this river is flowing, something's going to happen. There's going to be some result of it. There's going to be some fruit of it. You see, when the river is fertile, it's going to produce fruit. Because you see, everything that flows out of churches don't produce. But the river of God, because it's living water, it's going to produce life. We have a, a, a Bible example of water really not producing any life in a city. In 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 19, I'm going to read it from the Amplified Version. It has to do with the prophet Elisha. It says, The men of the city said to Elisha, Behold, inhabiting of this city is pleasant, as my Lord sees. But the water is bad and the locality causes miscarriage and barrenness in all animals. He said, bring me a new bowl and put salt, the symbol of God's purifying power in it. And they brought it to him. Then Elisha went to the spring of the waters 
and cast the salt in it and said, Thus says the Lord, I, not the salt, have healed these waters. There shall not be any more death, miscarriage, or barrenness and bereavement because of it. So the waters were healed to this day as Elisha had said. The men told Elisha, this, this place is pleasant. Look at this city, Elisha. This place is really nice. But it ain't producing anything. Right. Mm -hmm. Nothing is coming out. See, churches can be pleasant and nice. But there's no fruit for us. Right. We don't want to be that. Mm -hmm. We ain't going to be that. Either. As your pastor, I, I, I ain't standing for it. Right. I didn't give my life to preach the gospel see nothing happen. I've been spending my days seeing God do things and the fruitfulness of His church. We got three campuses. Now we we'll have another one. Hey, we're gonna have more. But I want this ministry to produce fruit. Why? Because I know if the river is flowing in here, it's going to. It cannot not produce. If the river of life is flowing in here. So, you know, th there's some churches that they get everything nice. We, we want everything as nice as we can have it. We want the air conditioned right. We want the seats right. That's why we came here. We got a nice place here. This ain't our place. We will have a place one day. This ain't it. And when we do get it, we're going to make it as nice as we can. The first church we pioneered, the first property we own, we had a little house on there. Back in 1981, we knocked all the walls out and we didn't have much money. We just had enough to buy the, the property. We just bought it. Knocked all the walls out of it. We had cement floors. Coal, metal, folding chairs. <laughs> Hard. <laughs> But I want to tell you, the power of God was in place. We knew we were in the right place at the right time, doing what God wanted us to do. God was moving in that place, just moving in that place. And I can tell you many stories. Let me tell you one. The Spirit of God was moving. I was up front. Sister Corb, an old Italian woman, the Spirit of God was, I'm telling you, moving in place. She gives a message in tongues. God gave me the interpretation. So I gave the interpretation. Okay? That's fine. That week, Wednesday night, we a, I was teaching a home group in Metairie, and we had, a, we had a lady that was in that service. She was a visitor first time there. She came to the Bible group. And when we had a little break at the Bible group, she came up to me. She said, Pastor, I want to tell you something. She said, that lady that spoke, she says, I'm Greek. She said, that lady spoke a message in my native language. And you said in English what she said. I said, say that again? I said, you got to come out here into this room and tell these people what happened. This woman was an Italian woman. She didn't know Greek. This woman was Greek. She spoke a word in tongues, which was Greek. She understood it in her native language. And then God gave me the interpretation for the people that spoke English. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. I used to hear missionaries telling me about that. Yeah. They never experienced it. Let me tell you something. See, when a river starts flowing, you don't know what, what God's going to do. But that river has to flow, you see. And God's intention for you and I, as church, as a church, as believers, is to live fruitful lives. Lives that are going to matter. That will be a testimony 
to everybody that knows us, to the world, whoever, people you work with, people you live with, your neighbors, whoever it is, that your life is fruitful. Mm -hmm. See, and that must be true collectively as a church. We need to bear fruit as a church. Individually, we need to produce spiritual fruit in our lives. And the only way it happens is that we got to be in the river. Mm -hmm. you got to be in the river. Mm -hmm. It don't come no other way. It don't come through religiosity. It don't come through rituals. It don't come through anything. It comes from the Spirit of God, the river of God. Living water that brings freshness. It's fresh water, not, not old water, not stagnated water. It's fresh water, invigorating water, energizing water, living water that's going to touch us. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29. Isaiah said, He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youth grow tired and weary. Young men stumble and fall. But those whose hope is in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. See, when you get in, the, in this river, you're going to be energized. You're going to be able to look. I don't care what you're facing. I don't care what your track record is. God is going to encourage you. We're talking about something that is not natural, but supernatural. Something that is far superior than the natural life. Because the river of God is persistent. I don't know about you, it's persistent. If you've come to Christ, try to walk away and see what God's going to do. That spirit will be on you. He will show you you're going in the wrong direction. You're doing the wrong things. You need to come back. The spirit of God is persistent. And he'll be persistent on those we're praying for. See, that's why we need to pray. That's why we, we, we come here and we have worship and prayer. We want God's Holy Spirit to be persistent on those loved ones of ours, friends of ours, relatives, neighbors, whoever it may be, that that Holy Spirit will be persistent on them. Yeah. And that God will not give up on them. See, the floodgate was open on Pentecost. Floodgate was, was open. I mean, the Holy Spirit came down like a waterfall on them. And we can't ever remember. That was 2,000 years ago. That floodgate is still open. Yeah. That floodgate is wide open. God never shut it up. He never closed it up. That, that floodgate is wide open. The Spirit of God has been poured out on us. And this river is still flowing. See, when we see the church swimming in this river, we're going to see revival. Mm -hmm. You're going to see, you're going to see revival. You, I've seen it already. We, we have seen it. You, every time somebody walks in that door, it's in this church, they're going to walk in lit up. Mm -hmm. As your pastor, that's what I want to see. I want to see you, I want to see you coming in like this. Say, <laughs> so, Pastor, you don't know what I've been through. I can't wish you've been through. <laughs> Are you in the river? Come on. If you're in the river, you shouldn't be walking in like that. Right. Leave those problems outside. Woo. You got the victory. You're walking in to the house of God. You're walking in where victory is. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to see it. We're going to see it. Where would you be today, right now, if the Holy Spirit had not been persistent with you? Where would you be? Yeah. Let me tell you something. We just we got a phone call the other day. So a couple that we passed it years ago. The son just OD on drugs. It's terrible. I can't stop thinking about it. This kid had Christian parents. We need to stay in the river. See, the Holy Spirit comes on us. I love when He comes on us. But He comes on us again. 
and again and again. He's going to keep coming on us. Why? Because he wants to flow out of us. Because you see, there's gladness in the river. Let me tell you something. The joy of the Holy Ghost is, is from God. You, you can't find this out there. I don't care what you go do. Go do whatever you think the world is doing out there. You're not going to have joy. You're not going to be glad. I don't care what you have. How much money you make. What you do, you won't be glad. Until you're in the river of God. Amen. Then you're going to be glad. Because you see, nothing's going to be able to take it away from you. Right. Because it's going to bring health. It brings health to every spiritual disease, every evil that affects the church. It will wipe it out. Amen. See, the river can clean up a church. One well, day, there's some churches that need to be cleaned up. Come on. They got people walking in there with sin. Walking in with sin, walking out. This church ain't going to be like that. See, we're ahead. the Holy Ghost is going to be so present here. If you're in sin, you're not going to be able to stay here. Say, so, well, people come and go. Of course they come and go. If they're coming in sin, thinking they're going to find some comfort here, you can forget about that. You ain't going to find comfort here. You're either going to come in, get saved, repent, Get filled, or you ain't going to be able to take it here. I don't want you to take it here. I don't want you in immorality sitting here week in and week out and nothing happening to you. No, it ain't going to happen. The Holy Spirit will bring conviction. The Word of God will bring conviction. Not condemnation. You already condemned. We don't have to condemn anybody. You already condemned. But the Holy Spirit, when you walk in, you're going to feel conviction. That's why a lot of people come in. They don't stay here. They go, they go back out. i got to go back to my church. Go back there. Sit there. You come here. There's a river flowing in here. Come on. See, and when you get in that river, it's going, to, it's going to start doing something to you. It's going to start straightening your life out. It's going to start healing areas in your life. That sin has destroyed. All right. It gets me why, well, I know why, and people's hearts ain't right. But if your heart is right, you want to be hit when you come in here. When I, when I hear people preach, when I sit down and I hear Joseph preach, when we get people in here and I'm sitting there listening, I want to be hit. Hit yeah. me. Come on. Come on, Holy Ghost. Touch me. Show me an area in my life that, that, that ain't right. I want, I want to get it right. Yeah. See, the, the river can clean up a church. Just like it can clean up a life. Mm -hmm. Just like it can clean up a marriage. Yes. Just like it can clean up a family. Yeah. It's got to be the river, though. Mm -hmm. See? See? Church doctrine is not going to do it. You teach people, hey, we got the doctrine. Our doctrine's right. We know what, what the Word of God says. But if that's all you're getting is just doctrine, it's not going to work. See, the Word of God is like the wood for the fire. But you need the fire. <laughs> you need the Holy Ghost to take that, that Word and just... Burn it up into your hearts and into your life. Yeah. See, when there's an unhealthy condition in Christians' lives, I tell you that, listen, I've been passing long enough. Why do people get like that? I'll tell you why. They hinder the Holy Spirit from working in their life. See, what they do, they begin to stifle the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is persistent. The Holy Spirit, every time you come in here under this preaching and under this anointing, you, you're going to be, the Holy Spirit is going to be persistent in you. I'm going to tell you how persistent. I had people come and tell me, Pastor, man, what you just preached is just what I needed. I said, what was that? They started telling me what God was doing in their life. I said, I wasn't preaching about that. The Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. I don't know what everybody needs. 
When I was in Chalmette, we had 600 people in there. I, I don't know what our people walk. I don't know what you need. I'm just going to preach and believe that the Holy Spirit is going to begin to move. He's the pastor of the church. That's right. Come on. The Holy Spirit will begin to move and start touching areas of your life I don't know anything about, but He does. That's right. So a river of life should make us spiritually healthy, people full of spiritual vigor and vitality. We need to be so, so full of spiritual vitality. You need to be rushing into this place. Come on. Yeah. Not straggling in like we do here. I hope we get out of that. I hope we get here on time or even before that. We're praying here in the morning. Just come on in and pray with us. Amen. I want to see people can't wait to get into the church. We've seen it in Chalmette when God was moving in a mighty way. And I wouldn't get there to five minutes to, to ten because people would want to talk to me. And I didn't want to talk to people because I had a message to <coughs> preach. I didn't want to hear their problem. Tell me after, not before. I wouldn't go out into the auditorium to five minutes to ten before the service started. People would come up to your pastor, you got a minute? No, I don't have a minute. Because I know you you can't tell me in a minute. <laughs> See me after. See me after. See me after. I don't want to hear that right now. I got a message to preach. But we saw people. We would we would we would drive up to, to, to the building and people would be running into the building. Hi, baby. I said, look at him. One day we, we drove up there, drove in a parking lot, couldn't find a parking place. We had to drive out on Paris Road. I had to park half a block down the street, three quarters of a block. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. <laughs> Me and Sister Dawn laughed all the way there. I said, I can't wait to. I got to park on Judge Perez and walk half a mile because there's no parking places. See, it, 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 we were in the river. We're going to be in the river here. Yeah. We, we're going to be river people. Yeah. We, we want the river because there's life in the river. There's a river whose streams make glad the city of our God. We're going to be people that's glad to be here. Glad to be here. Not all. I got to come on Sunday. It's cold out there. It's raining. This, that. Well, uh, I don't care what it is. If it's snowing, I'm gonna be here. See, because I want to be in the presence of God. I, I want to. I want to be where God knows His people are gonna show up, and He's gonna be there. There's life in the river. Real life. Eternal life. Yes, Lord. I want to be there. Jesus, on the last and greatest day of the feast, gave them an invitation. He said, if you were thirsty, that is spiritually. That's what he was talking about. If you really want God to touch you spiritually, that they would have to come and drink. Meaning that they must believe that he's the river of life. So you've got to believe that. That life is in me. See, the apostle Paul warned the church. He warned the church, the Ephesian church, Ephesians 4.30. He said, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. See, grieving the Holy Spirit is this. See, when, when God is wanting to do something with you and you resist, see, you stifle Him. God's wanting to do something with you and we stifle him. See, the river of life should make us spiritually healthy, but 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 what people are doing is that they are resisting. <clears throat> Grieving the Holy Spirit when he wants to do something with us, when he wants to move on us. Man, I love that. I want to be moved by the Holy Ghost. In fact, the Bible says that, that the holy men of God were moved by the Holy Ghost to write this. I want to be moved by the Holy Ghost. 
every day of my life. He wants to move in us. We stifle him. First Thessalonians, Paul said in 5.19, do not put out the Spirit's fire. In other words, don't throw a wet blanket on the Spirit that's trying to do something with you. I'm trying to put it out. The Apostle Paul instructs Timothy, his son, in the Lord to do this in 2 Timothy 1.6. He said, for this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. The gift of God Paul told Timothy he received from the laying on of hands was the Holy Ghost. It was the Holy Spirit. Paul laid hands on him. He received the Holy Spirit. So Paul told Timothy, fan into flames the gift. Some translation says, stir it up. Yeah. Rekindle the fire. See, that fire goes out sometimes. The things of the world can put the spiritual fire out. The trials of life, the lure of the things of the world. Things out there will throw a wet blanket on the fire of God that's in your life. Paul tells Timothy, stir it up. Fan it to flame. It's in there. Let's go. Let's get this fire burning in us. Here's the challenge today. Do you feel spiritually dry? And what Jesus said, come. Come. Come to me and drink now. Drink now. And whoever believes in me, as the scriptures have said, as the scripture says, as the scripture says. He said, believe in me as the scripture says. So we've got to take faith in the word of God or what the word of God says about Jesus. Hmm. Believe in me as the scripture says. See, faith lays hold of what God has said. So what, what did God say? What did Jesus say? Streams of living water don't flow from the dead. It's going to flow from within us. It's going to flow out of us. And our commitment as a church, as believers, we've got to let it flow out of us. But first we've got to let it flow in. Let us have a willingness to let God's Holy Spirit move in us. I want you to stand with us. This is what we're going to do. We're going to get around this altar. We're going to start believing God. We're going to start surrendering ourselves to God's Holy Spirit. Say, God, I got issues in my life. That's fine. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you have your way in me. And then let the chips fall where they may. But I'm going to let you take me and use me. Gather around. We're going to wait on God.